yesterday we found out, of course, that the jailed British Iranian mother will now have to serve her five-year prison sentence in Tehran, despite a fresh plea from the British government to release her. Well, Nazanin was convicted on security charges in Iran in 2016. A spokesman for the Iranian Foreign M Ministry said they don't recognise her dual nationality. This morning she begins her 11th day on hunger strike, as does her husband, Richard, who is outside the Iranian embassy mm -hmm. in Knightsbridge. Richard, we spoke to you yesterday. Good morning to you again. Obviously, very bad news uh, overnight. What is your reaction to this, well, reinforcement, really, by the Iranians that they're going to make your wife serve a full five-year sentence? Good morning. Yes, that's right. It wasn't good news. Um, it wasn't good news. It was also reinforced by the judiciary, which will probably have the most powerful voice. So, yes, um, sobering. I mean, obviously, it feels a bit like this of a battle of words at this moment. So, you know, her lawyer is, is busy trying to see actually what's really going on behind the headlines. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I think I've been surprised all along by how, how much they've doubled down and, and asserted when we've been here on our protest. So, uh, We'll watch closely to see how things move with them. I mean, it must be a very difficult thing for you, Richard, to try and calculate whether what you're doing in highlighting this in such a spectacular way with your own hunger strike, your outside Iranian embassy, whether it's actually helping or hindering what is going on back there. Do you get any sense of, of what the answer to that may be? So the honest answer is I don't think one ever knows. Um, we've had lots of uh, Iranians coming up to us and saying that you just keep going, it's going to work. Uh, experienced prisoners inside the ward say, listen, don't worry, that's just their tactics to scare you. So part of me thinks that, you know, yeah, I think this is just tactics to sort of just, you know, not encourage others to do what we're doing. But of course, for Nazanin, it feels very tough to, you know, have this sentence, uh, um, you know, potentially added to a full one, and then they were talking about an extra one yesterday. And even again, the judiciary yesterday referenced Boris Johnson's comments to justify why she was serving a full sentence. And probably over time, they've got grander in their claims, so they now do talk in sort of full espionage terms. Um, uh, you know, I mean, they know it's nonsense, but they've sort of got bigger and bigger in the stories they tell. Oh, and, and Richard, Boris Johnson last night in one of his rare media interviews with Laura Kunzberg at the BBC, you know, he was very quick to not take any responsibility himself, to park it all on the Iranians and to say we shouldn't be looking at him and what he said because actually it gives them a pass. I don't agree with that. I don't think most people agree with that. But for you sitting there, you know, on this hunger strike, hearing a guy who was the foreign secretary who basically said she was out there training journalists completely uh, contradicting everything that had been said in her defence. What did you feel about what he said last night? Well, well, I think your words are right. I think the extraordinary bit for me is that he can't take responsibility. Um, of course, it's not all his fault. Uh, I'm in front of the Iranian embassy for a very good reason, because they're the ones in prison here. But clearly he had a role, not just in Nazanin's case, but in others' cases. Um, he did make things worse. And, and the failure to take responsibility is a key failure. What does it say, do you think, about... You know, I know you have much bigger priorities to worry about than Boris Johnson, but you know, he may be Prime Minister of this country in a few weeks' time. What does it say about his care, his due diligence, his attention to detail, that as a foreign secretary in such an emotive and well-publicised case, he made such a catastrophic mistake with such far-reaching consequences and still refuses to really take any accountability for it? Yeah, look, I think, I think it's ominous. Um, I think, uh, you know, on a, on a narrow level for us, it means that, obviously, we're getting ready to push whoever does become Prime Minister and just make it really clear that Nazim has to be front and centre of their attention. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, I think, you know, a Prime Minister is responsible for the country. It's a key skill um, that you have that ability to, to be able to take care of people. And Jeremy Hunt, of course, um, has been able to show us perhaps a very different way of being Foreign Secretary, particularly in relation to your case. Uh, yeah, we, obviously, we still push him. She's still in prison. She's still at home. Um, and, uh, yeah, like, I think it's not for me to compare between foreign secretaries. Um, Jeremy Hunt is still our foreign secretary, and we'll, you know, once all this is over, we'll be pushing him again before he becomes prime minister. Um, but certainly, I think, uh, um, you know, I think it's important that someone keeps Nazanin and, and all the others that are held, it's not just Nazanin, um, that protecting British citizens is, is almost the top priority of the government. Yes, I can imagine that the only foreign secretary you think is a very good foreign secretary would it's be the one, the one that gets, gets Nazanin out. Yeah. Uh, Richard, uh, we send you our best wishes, as we do every morning. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's really... And we keep going back to him because... This is a very real thing mm. going on with a British citizen. You know, his, his wife is in this prison completely wrongly. And 
you know, her situation has been made immeasurably worse by the behaviour and actions and flippancy, frankly, of somebody who wants to be Prime Minister. So See, in that case, it's very relevant. Precision matters, doesn't it? You know, words matter. Every word as a Foreign Secretary is hugely important. And I think Every for, word as a Prime Minister is hugely important. I think for, for perhaps us over here, hearing that she was training journalists, you'd think, well, what, mm. what is... That doesn't sound like a crime. Mm. In Iran, I suggest that there was a lie about what she was doing there. They accuse her of <laughs> espionage. Um, you know, I mean, it, these things, you've got to read your brief, mm. haven't you? And know mm. how to, you know, not put a foot wrong. Um, we have to read briefs for this show, for every interview. Yep. We have to be on top of our game to not make stupid mistakes. And when we make them, you pick us up. And we don't make many because you try and be prepared. But when you're foreign secretary and you're talking about stuff that has literally life and death, death impact... The woman's out there on hugely holiday. important. Seeing family. And, you know, I watched him last night. He just would... Don't blame me, Gov. Nothing to do with me, mate. All the Iranians, you know, don't, don't let them off the hook. <coughs> Spinning, obfuscating, getting it away from him. You know, whereas actually, I would admire him more if he looked down the barrel of that camera last night and said, I would like to once more unreservedly apologise for my terrible mistake, which has had awful consequences. Mm. That I would admire more than blame the Iranians, not me, personally.